Hello, all Bob Fasani at the Piper Sandler Global Exchange Conference. This is the annual meeting of all the heads of exchanges. What are we talking about? What are they talking about? The markets, flows, trading activity. Keynote speech today, Glenn Hutchins, an old friend of CNBC, North Island founder, CEO. Glenn, thanks very much. Great to see you. You uh, spent 30 minutes here giving us your outlook. Uh, you've already spoken at Davos and given some opinions as well. Uh, tell us about where you see the markets right now. I know you were talking in Davos about the P.E. ratios and, of course, uh, multiples coming down. I guess the next question is we've seen multiples come down from, what, 21 to 16 or 17. People are wondering about things like earnings right now, earnings coming down. So, look, um, uh, obviously this time period people are very concerned and nervous, uh, and uh, I, I don't have a magic bullet for you. I apologize. Uh, but uh, the way I think about this, as I've said a couple times with your colleagues, is I have a central uh, base case planning assumption and I think about scenarios around that, mm -hmm. right? And my base case planning assumption is that we find ourselves in a recession in 2023. I don't think it's deep because it's not a balance sheet recession like 2008, uh, but it could be longer because infl if inflation is persistent, rates will have to stay up higher to combat it. Um, if that's the case, then this P.E. adjustment that we've seen so far in the markets, and I emphasize if that's the case, I could be wrong, and I could get information tomorrow that changes my view, oh. okay? But, um, right? but if that's the case, uh, this P.E. adjustment that we've seen to date, um, which has rolled through as a result of interest rates, and that has brought not only stocks down, but also bonds down because rates go up, bonds go down, as you well know and your viewers know. Um, is, pro is, well, is the first phase of, of a market that could have a second phase, which is when the recession effects hit companies, and they'll hit different companies in different ways depending upon their recession sensitivity, right? Uh, then you'll have an earnings effect on the PEs as well that we haven't seen yet. And so I'm waiting to see what the earnings effect are and worried about re uh, recession sensitive companies until I um, think about the markets being someplace where you can invest a large amount of capital in public markets. On the other hand, the one thing I would say, Bob, is you know, if you go back and look over the history of investing, uh, people who have made decisions to exit the markets at a time like this have regretted it. Because historically, going back to the before, before the Great Depression, uh, staying exposed to markets as long as you have, can have a long-term time frame and you have your personal liabilities addressed as a consequence of the liquidity you have. Staying in markets over the time period and giving yourself the chance for them to rally again has proven to be a, a good strategy. Yeah, it's not, it's not timing the markets, it's time in the markets, as they right. always used well to said. say. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. I forgot um, about that. By the way, all these old uh, oh, adages are coming back now. Are yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, fundamental investing, isn't that yeah. amazing uh, concept? But yeah. I'm wondering, your, your thought about the earnings. I've been astonished that the earnings estimates are still expected to be up 10% for 2022 and for 2023. Uh, why aren't, you'd think the analysts would feel the way you do, seeing a potential economic slowdown in the second half of the year, but it's not showing up in the er earnings estimates. Yeah, that's why I say it's more like, I think it's more like a 23 thing, because if you, right now, one of the benefits we have, we start into this with a strong economy. That's why it's overheating. Yeah. A lot of consumer spending, a lot of uh, high employment, whatnot. So it's not a weak economy. You can't look at a specific company and say, today, that's going to be there next year, right? But if the Fed does keep interest rates high, and the behavior that we're starting to see, which is incipient, which is companies not hiring as much, being laying off a few people, bank balances starting to go down, consumer spending, uh, used auto prices starting to go down, et cetera, et cetera, you'll see... Um, uh, that, if that behavior manifests itself in the kind of behavior across the economy. Remember, over the last 10 years, pol the policy stance has been to increase economic activity. Mm. And over the next several years, the policy stance is going to be to reduce economic activity, to cool off yeah. inflation. <laughs> and that might take some time. As I said to an economist recently, they say, well, I don't see a recession in the data. It says, you won't see what we're doing today in, in yeah. your data until tomorrow. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, uh, right, and, and until you start seeing the data, it's hard for analysts to say this is where it goes. Let me ask you about the bonds. Uh, I was recently at the ETF conference in Miami Beach, uh, 2,000 RIAs, and one of the things uh, they were most concerned about is the old 60-40 stock bond paradigm. There was considerable concern that this is a secular change in bonds. Uh, and that 60, 40 stocks to bonds may not be that smart anymore. We had some people coming in 
uh, talking about, uh, forget about the, that 40% component, you should have it in some combination of cash or commodities and maybe very, very short-term bonds. Is, is the 60-40 stock paradigm, stock bond paradigm dead? Is there anything to replace it with? What's your thoughts? No, it's a good question. Uh, and I don't give investment advice, and I'm not a bond investor, so you've got me in alien territory in two respects, right? Yeah. But what I would say is I think about this for individual investors as bonds as, as much an investment category that goes up and down, um, equally as much uh, the place in which you hedge your liabilities. So if you are a young person, you're going to want to have more equities, fewer bonds, because you want to expose yourself to long-term growth. If you're in the middle of your life where you've got mortgage payments and tuition payments and other things, you want to have a little bit more bonds because you want to have the liquidity. And if you're later in your life and you haven't got a, a, a big runway for the equity markets to increase and you're worried about health care payments in addition to other fixed income issues you might have in your life and you're not earning money anymore because you're not working, you might want to have more liquidity. So I think you have to think about bonds as both being an investment category but also a source of liquidity for liability management. Yeah. That's the way I think about it. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts um, on uh, 2023, for example. You had a very good point about people should not panic too much uh, at this point. Um, and yet at the same time, you said there maybe it's not this second leg down here around the earnings situation. So we are only 15% off of the highs from the beginning of the year. Right. Your advice to people right now who are, let's say, roughly our age, say 65 years old, what should they be doing? Well, you know, again, I don't give investment advice. What I would do say is, it's going to get better. We're going to go through a rough patch here because the policy stance is going to point us in that direction. Uh, but every one of those time periods, the 30s, you know, through the 70s, through the great financial crisis, we come out the other end and American companies build great products and services. They find a way to earn money and their stocks go up. The message is believe in the American system. If you don't or you don't think you're going to be around that long, maybe be a little more cautious. <laughs> Glenn Hutchins, thanks so much. Always a pleasure to talk with you. Of course, Glenn Hutchins is the CEO of North Island. And I'm here at the Global Exchange Conference. Thank you all for joining us.